Hello everyone, welcome to soundproofguide.com. In this video, I'll be answering a very popular question that I get asked of people that lives in condos or townhouses. And that is, how do I soundproof the wall between me and my neighbor? They also call that a party wall, which I have a video that I talk about different ways on how to soundproof a party wall. But in this video, I'll be talking about the ultimate way to get it done and to get perfect results. So somebody asked me a question, and this is a popular question that I get asked, is people that live in condos, more specifically, townhouses. And the person asked, I'm on the end unit. I've been living there for about six months with the unit beside me having nobody there. It was vacant. And now the people moved in and he was basically shocked at how sound traveled through the wall. Now he would have thought that like most people would think townhouses would be soundproof between units. But the truth is, it's not. And one thing to point out is that they also said that the people in the unit beside them weren't making a whole lot of noise. They were just talking, just make, you know, just walking around and talking and they could clearly hear the mumbling of people talking. Now, if the neighbors had music on, they could tell what type of music it was and sometimes what song it was. So these walls were paper thin. And the problem is, is that this is not uncommon. And most people that moves into townhouses face this exact situation, is how do I soundproof the wall between the two units after it's been already built? Now, a lot of people will say, well, I don't really have too much of a big budget to soundproof the wall. And then they turn around and say, that they are going to move because they just can't handle this townhouse that feels like they're living in a cheap apartment where you can hear everything around you. So if you're going to be spending the money to put your condo up for sale and moving expenses and starting over somewhere else, you should really invest in soundproofing the wall of the unit between yours and the one beside you. And one thing that also people don't realize is that if you spend the money to soundproof the wall, once you go and you put your unit on the market, that will differentiate your unit from everybody else's. Because the thing is, most units will be quite the same, especially in a townhouse. There's a lot of townhouse communities. They all look the same. If yours is on the market and it says that it has a soundproof wall between, so in short, it will add value to your unit. So you'll get your money back regardless and probably even more profit on top of that. What you might wonder is, what is minimal code requirement? Now, if you buy a brand new townhouse, you might think, well, this is brand new. There is a minimum code requirement for the builders to build these townhouses where you shouldn't be hearing too much of the people living right beside you. It's not like you're in a house, you know, it's just a room between a room. It's another unit, it's another house. So you probably think that there is a minimum code requirement for that. Now, basically minimum code requirement for a builder is typically 50 on the STC scale. Now, this is somewhat acceptable in the code requirement because at 50 STC scale, you shouldn't really be hearing the people on the other side of the wall, but, but if your neighbors raise their voice or puts their TV on, have music on, you will definitely hear what's coming through. 50 STC is definitely not enough. Now, the real question is, how do I soundproof the wall between units? So basically, the best way to soundproof the wall between the two units is first, you should probably hire somebody to do this, but if you have experience in construction, you can do this yourself. If you like this type of content, consider subscribing to my channel. I will provide links to each and every one of these products I talk about in this video in the description below. So the first thing you should do is completely rip out all of the drywall on, of course, just your side of the two units. 
Most likely you will notice that there is absolutely no insulation between the two units. It will most likely just be a gap and then it will be their wall, which is completely ridiculous because sound will so easily travel even through the electrical outlets. So now that the drywall is no longer on the wall, the first thing you'll want to do is grab some putty pad. So these putty pads, you will wrap them around the electrical outlets. It will completely close off all the holes that will typically let noise through. So with these closed off, that's a pretty good start in soundproofing that wall. So step number three is now you will need to install some insulation on the wall. Now, a lot of people online and in the YouTube community will say that just use the typical fiberglass insulation and don't waste your money on actual soundproofing insulation. Well, I will have to disagree with that because the soundproofing insulation will have a lot more soundproofing elements added to the insulation. Think about how electricity will always go to ground and will always find the path of least resistance to get there. While sound is the exact same in a sense, sound waves will go through the wall, through the insulation, and if there is a lot more gaps and holes in your typical fiberglass pink insulation that you have inside your house, it will let a lot more sound in versus your soundproofing insulation. I go more into detail about soundproofing insulation and which one to choose for your soundproofing project on the video that's popping up above. So now that you have the insulation in the wall, the next thing you'll want to do is put drywall. Now, the type of drywall that you should choose is either five eight inch drywall or go even a step further and choose soundproofing drywall. So basically by using these uh, types of soundproofing drywall, it adds a little bit more soundproofing elements inside the drywall. Now, typically it will have about two layers of gypsum and a layer of some type of coating in between them. It's usually a soundproofing compound built in that will help deaden sound trying to get through the drywall. Now, this type of compound not only deadens sound, but when you go and put the screw in the drywall, it seals around the screw so there's no holes letting sound through into the other room. Now, the next step is to go a step further and to add another layer of soundproofing drywall. Now, a lot of people will say that this is overkill, but for the small amount of money that you're going to be putting into this, it is worth doing. It is worth going that step further. Now, you might not be able to add a second layer of drywall in, let's say, the kitchen or the washroom where there's already built-in countertops that is attached to the wall. That is completely fine. But in those rooms where there is only a big wall, add that second layer of drywall if you can. It will basically reduce even more the decibels coming through the wall. So that will be the ultimate way to soundproof the wall between your unit and the unit beside you. Now, if you do it the exact way that I explain, which is not, com not terribly complicated, you will be on your way to having a soundproof wall and you'll be amazed. And it will most likely keep you in the house for many more years and also raise the value of your townhouse. So there's a lot of advantages of doing it this way. There's gonna be links in the description below of all of the products that I talk about in this video and also links to other videos on this topic and about the products that I also talk about in this video regarding the insulation and the soundproof drywall. Feel free to take a look at many of our other YouTube videos and also some of our articles on our website soundproofguide.com. Don't forget to click the like button if you enjoyed this video and also consider subscribing to our channel if you like our content. Also feel free to leave us a comment below if you have any soundproofing questions of your own. We will certainly try our very best to help you. Thank you very much for watching and I hope to see you again in the next video or any other videos in our channel. Thank you very much.